Hey and welcome back to a new video on this channel. Today we are talking about the tools that you can use to create content in the Adobe Experience Design. Let's get into this by creating a new artboard. This is a predefined one. I talked about artboards in the last tutorial, so check that out if you haven't seen that. And we have a bunch of tools that, you, that we can use to create content. Now we have a rectangle tool, we have an ellipse tool, a line tool, a pen tool and a text tool. We can reach them by just using our key, keyboard shortcuts. You can use the R to create a rectangle and an A and E to create an ellipse a line with L and a pen created vector with the P and of course text with the, with the T layer on or T key on your keyboard. Okay so let's get into this let's just try them out. So we have rectangles just right here and you see some of these dots inside these rectangles. Now you can drag and drop them to create rounded borders. But you can also go over here and select that you want to have different uh, corner radius values for each corner. So let's add some different values for each of these corners and Oops, and it will basically just look like this. That's pretty nice, so you can define what value these corners should have, or of course, you could just go back and track them the way you want. Now then we have, of course, a way to define the opacity, of course, right here. We can set a fill, we can set a border, and of course also shadows. We can add a background blur, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But that's about rectangles. Let's go to ellipse and circles. We can just drag them normally. And if you hold shift, then you get this normal circle like that. We can of course set the same things in the appearance tab like opacity, fill, border, shadow and background blur. So that's just the same. Let's make this a little bit smaller like that and let's drag it over here. Of course you can always jump back to the select tool to uh, just drag and drop them and just use the key V. Then we have the line. Hit shift to get a normal uh, vertical line or in a 45 degree angle. But you can of course just release the key and drag it to any position. Here you can of course also change the opacity but you can set a border and the border is basically the filling of the line and you can say I want it to be 30 pixels or let's say 50 pixels big like that and so you can like define a rectangle by using the line tool like that so we can move this over here and we have the pen tool. I already made some clicks some minutes ago and we can create custom uh, figures and so on using the pen tool. We can double click it to just get into this again. We can delete them and we can of course also add new points to the current figure like that. There it is. And of course we can just drag it oops. 
course drag it just over here because this is like our trash bin where we save up all the stuff. You can add a fill and I guess it's easier to drag it right now. Yeah, if you add a fill you can drag it just in the middle of it but if it doesn't have any filling you can't grab it so you have to grab the line. Just keep that in mind if you have a hard time of dragging and dropping uh, these custom made shapes. Then we have the, sh the text tool and let's say we want a white text then we can just type in anything we want. Just select the text, make it white and of course we can do the same stuff here again. We can select fonts, we can select a font size and a weight. That. So it's really easy to create all this stuff. Now let's create a small user interface. Now we should actually go back and select a new artboard. Let's just go for this iPhone 6 one. And we could just drop in some stuff. Now we have this artboard and I would like to give it a grayish filling like this and now we can drag in images. Now images are also like a tool that you can use to just get content into your designs. Now you see it's about, whole, uh, about double of the size of the artboard. So in Sketch I would normally just type in this which would like uh, divided by two. I'm not sure if this is also working in Adobe Experience Design, but we will test it out right now. And no, it's not working. Let's try it out again. No. Interesting, Adobe Experience Design doesn't have this feature yet, but that's not a problem. We just scale it down to our artboard like that. You can of course use these uh, alignment tools right here. For example, to center it, just click this one and we want it to be at the top, so we just use that. So the next thing that we are going to do is to drag in some more elements, but we need a rectangle tool like this, which we, we will just drag in right here, like that. We can hit V to get back to the selection tool and we can just of course uh, align it with our normal arrow keys. Now you see if I zoom in that we get some sort of aligning right here which is great and of course we want it to be aligned on the other side as well. So we just grab it and there we have it, nice. So I prepared some more elements in this case two buttons that I'm going to drag in right now. Like this and drag the second one in like that. So we have some buttons right here that we can play with in our user interface. This looks kind of odd, should be like about this. And now let's also drag in two elements at the same time. Oops, yeah, that's something I have to talk about in a few seconds. Because if you select an image, we can of course also just use one of these buttons that we just used. And if you drag them on top of one of these uh, rectangle layers, for example, then it will automatically mask these layers and place the, the graphic or the image that you grabbed uh, on top of it. But that's not what we actually wanted. We just wanted to place it in our uh, artboard. But you see, that can be a problem at the moment because I guess if I drag it to this one, it will actually just do the same. And yeah, it just did the same. 
So you see it's like a new element. So you can, it's possible that you have a hard time figuring out how to get, for example, these two icons in. But we can drag them into this gray area right here and then we can drag them over to this one. And of course we also have to, re we have to reduce the size of both of them so we get the correct uh, position and correct size that we wanted. So imagine we have like a card or something right here or an article that we can add to our card and I wanted to show you what we can do with the, back, with the background blur. So let's just um, grab another rectangle. Let's keep this right here and let's hit R to create a new rectangle which we are just going to place on top of these buttons. The reason why I didn't use this rectangle that we already made was that I couldn't really place it above the buttons. We currently don't have a way to uh, change the like layer hierarchy. So in this case, let's just create a new layer and this new layer will be at the top. So let's place it right here. And let's just enable the background blur. Now you see we can set some things like the, um, the, the, the blur amount right here. We can select the color, uh, uh, the, light, the lighting, um, and we can select some of a white filter to this, which will now look like this. Let's add some more blur. And this is actually a quite cool feature which you already know from Sketch if you, you, if you are used to watch the Sketch tutorials on this channel. And like this is a nice way to simulate some stuff that you can do in iOS with these blur effects. Okay, so this was one of the tutorials for this new series. I'm explaining all of the basics of Adobe Experience Design and this was like the second one where I explained the tools. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, I hope you learned something new about Adobe Experience Design and yeah, thank you for your time guys and enjoy your week. See you!